Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture on affine transformation. This is a very important topic to understand before we cover the upcoming topics like eigenvectors and eigenvalues etc. So as we talk about affine transformation, it is a transformation of a vector or a matrix from one state to another state after being multiplied with a matrix. If we are multiplying a matrix with a vector, then this vector can be transformed in a new form and this transformation is called affine transformation. By the way, here you can also consider a matrix as well, but let's consider this a vector for simplicity purpose. And now let's go ahead and explore this transformation further that I'm talking about. So scaling could be one of the transformation that we are talking about. Let's consider this vector on the left hand side, which is pointing towards three points in the X axis and three points in the Y axis. And if we scale it up further, then it will be transformed to this vector on the right hand side. So it is not changing its direction. It is just being increased by its magnitude. Next is rotation. So as you can see this vector on the left hand side, which is pointing to a certain coordinate, this vector can be multiplied to a matrix so that it rotates and changes its direction into this matrix on the right hand side. Another kind of transformation would be flipping the vector over X axis. So this vector is three points towards the X axis and three points towards the Y axis. And if we flip this vector over X axis, then it will be transformed into this vector on the right hand side. And now its coordinate is still three points towards X axis, but minus three points towards Y axis, which means the length and magnitude of the vector is still the same, but it has changed its direction over X axis. And very similar to that, we also have a transformation of flipping a vector over Y axis. So if you compare both the vectors on the left hand side and right hand side, then you will observe that the magnitude of the vector is still the same. It has just changed its direction by flipping over the Y axis. Okay, so we have seen different kind of transformations like flipping, scaling and rotation. However, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you may still have a question in your mind that how this transformation is happening by simply applying a matrix with the vector. And just to clarify this query further, we are going to do some hands-on coding demo so that we can understand more that how exactly a vector or matrix gets transformed into a new form when it is multiplied with another matrix. Okay, so I am on my Jupyter notebook now. And before we proceed further, let me tell you one thing that the coding demo I'm showing you throughout this playlist, it is not absolutely mandated that you also follow along with this and do the same practical coding on your side as well. The agenda of these practical coding demo is just to make your understanding more strong towards the tensor operations and how it is happening actually. Because I understand only going by the theory, it is a bit difficult to have a strong fundamental grip on subject like mathematics. So for this lecture as well, I'm using these two Python libraries, NumPy and Matplotlib. NumPy is just to play around with the numbers and Matplotlib for the visualization purpose. And this plotify function that you can see on the second cell, it will help us to plot any vector. And yes, this function is not created by me, by the way. I have actually taken it from Stack Overflow. So apologies if I'm not meeting your expectations. Anyways, so moving forward, I have this vector V created which has two elements and I'm using this plotify function to plot the vector. And after plotting, as you can see, we have the vector which is pointing at the three by two coordinates. And going forward, we will see that how this particular vector can be transformed after we apply or after we multiply it with another matrix. So I have created a matrix over here, matrix X, which I have created just to multiply with this vector V so that we can understand that how the multiplication product is leading to transform this vector. So I'm creating a new variable here, XV, which is nothing but the product of the matrix X and vector V. And let's go ahead and try to plot this variable XV. So I'm again using this plotify function. And once I'm plotting the product of this vector and matrix, you can see the vector has been flipped over the X axis. It has not changed its length or magnitude. It has just got flipped over the X axis. So I will show you a comparison in the next cell. As you can see, I'm plotting both the tensors. First, the original vector V that we had initially, and then the product of X and V. So on the top, 
you can see we have the vector v that we initially created and at the bottom when this vector got flipped over the x-axis this is actually the product we got after multiplying the vector v with the matrix x and it was a very neat example of a transformation of flipping a vector over x-axis. In the next cell I have created a new matrix, matrix Y, which looks something like this and this one is going to help us to flip the vector V over y-axis. So in the next cell you can see I have created a new variable YV which is nothing but the dot product of matrix Y and vector V and the product is this minus 3 and 2. Let's go ahead and try to plot this product in the new cell and as you can see our vector v which is on the right hand side has got flipped over the y-axis this time and i hope that now you have some clarity that how exactly a vector could be transformed or changes direction or can be flipped when we are multiplying it with another matrix so we are pretty much clear around an affine transformation with respect to a vector but now let's try to move out of the comfort zone and have a further understanding of a fine transformation with respect to a matrix this time. So let's consider a matrix A which has four elements. For simplicity purpose, I am creating it as a combination of a basis vector. By the way, if you have not seen the lecture on basis vector topic, then I suggest that you check it out within this playlist only. And if you try to plot this matrix, which is a simple two by two matrix by the way, then it will represent this area exactly that looks like a square surface area just like a photo frame and now let's try to understand that how can we transform this particular matrix or this surface area in terms of an affine transformation so pay attention to this picture on the left hand side and assume this photo frame inside the outer square as the area represented by our matrix and let's say that we are applying an affine transformation on this matrix then in order to be called as an affine transformation it has to satisfy certain conditions which are these so first is the origin might get changed and as we can see all the origins or the corners have been moved from their original location second is all lines must remain lines and as we can see on the picture on the left hand side all the four lines of the photo frame are still lines even after being transformed the parallel lines must remain parallel lines and as you can see this line and this line were parallel before transformation and even after transformation both these lines are still parallel to each other and same goes with these two lines as well so it doesn't matter how many lines you have within your area of the matrix even after applying an affine transformation all the lines must remain parallel with each other and the last condition is ratios should be preserved now if i'll have to explain you this point then I would like to explain it in this way that let's assume this line the top line of the photo frame and let's try to divide it in four parts so this is first this is second this is third and the last one is fourth so I have divided the line in four parts and after being divided into four parts there must be a ratio which is there within these four points so let's say that after applying the transformation even if the length of the line is getting changed but still the ratio between those four lines must be preserved and that is pretty much it in terms of a fine transformation with a two-dimensional tensor or a matrix and that is it for today's lecture i hope that you got to learn something new today if you're still having any confusion around understanding this topic then i would suggest that you watch this particular lecture one more time because even I faced a lot of difficulties when I was studying this particular topic for the first time. And also please consider watching all the tutorials within this playlist in a sequence manner, the way we are uploading them, because each and every new topic is correlated with the previous ones. So watching all the videos in sequence is suggested. If you found this video helpful, then please consider supporting the channel. Drop a like below and press that subscribe button so that you can get notified every time we are uploading a new tutorial. Thank you very much for your time today. See you in the next lecture.